Hello everyone, Cliff here in the shed again. So my next project for the Emco lathe is going to be to change the motor. It's got a few problems, there's, there's definitely something wrong with the motor. I think there also might be something wrong with the switching, I'm not sure. I'm not going to bother to look into it because I am going to change the motor and put a VFD on it. Um, let's pop over to the lathe and I'll show you what I mean. So this is what will happen if I try to take a half a millimetre cut across the face. I mean it's a pretty new sharpish bit. It stalls and it won't start again until you stop it and start it right now I'm going to try and take half a millimetre off down length and this is a brand spanking new bit because all that's done is took a quarter of a millimetre off the face because it inevitably chips a bit when it stalls so quick try and save me a bit so that's it and I would expect this lathe and one horsepower motor to be able to take an half a millimetre off so as you can see there is a problem there now things get a little bit convoluted I bought this motor on eBay it's uh it comes from Newton Tesla now Some of you may remember, uh, it's nearly two years ago actually, cause, well it's over two years ago, I bought a Newton Tesla second hand controller and motor which I put on the, the ML7. This has got exactly the same plug. So this will just plug straight into that controller. But this is only an half horsepower motor and I want an horsepower for the Emco. But the one on the Myford is an horsepower motor so this one's going on the Myford it's dead simple it just plugs straight in so I've tested it it was reversed but I've just swapped a couple of the uh, wires I just swap a couple of the line wires over and that reverses it so this is ready to go on to the the Myford and I'm going to take the one horsepower one off the Myford and figure out how to fit it onto the Emco. The Emco's got that special little motor on the um, back of it. Yeah, so I'm not sure about the mounting or what I'm gonna have to do to mount it. And then I've I've, I've already bought the um, I've already bought the VFD. Um, there's a couple of things I want to do with it different. I mean I've, I did the VFD on my woodwork lathe a little while ago. I've just got forward and reverse and stop and start on that. With this, um, with this VFD, I want to recreate some of the controls on the Tesla one I've got. Um, basically, I want start, stop, forward and reverse, but I want the jog facility on that as well. So I'm going to, I'm going to be doing that. I also want to sort of manufacture a. no volt release switch on it I was thinking about buying a complete no volt release switch but they're, they're also bulky and awkward and I really like the two on off push buttons on the Newton Tesla one I've got so I'm gonna do something about recreating that and then put a little panel on the front of the MCO because I like coming down on the buttons as well I mean the MCO obviously it's fine but I found I stoop a bit to come down to the controls it's not so bad now I've built it up on the frames it's, it's it's a bit higher probably higher than it should be but it's what I'm used to and it's comfortable for me so first thing I'm going to do is swap these motors over and then I'll do some testing on the bench with the uh, motor and the VFD exactly how I'm going to do the controls so I'll get this one swapped over. 
Right, I've got the motor on the uh, ML7. That's the new motor on there. The new second hand motor. And this is the control box for this Newton box. This is by Newton Tesla. And it's a fantastic setup. I mean, I got this second hand on eBay. But you've got the push button for on. Push button for off. This is the speed selector. This is a preset C speed selector, which I'm not bothered about. I don't particularly want that. This is the kill switch. And then you've got forward, reverse and the jog. And that's what I want to try and achieve on the um, in my cheapskate version on the MCO. So let's get back over the bench and I'll see if I can figure out how to configure the VFD to get what I want out of it. Right, back at the bench. This is me VFD I've bought and here's the motor that was on the ML7. I've already wired the motor in and the mains up to it. I'll just zoom in and show you that. Now as you just wiring the motor up is pretty simple. You just take this, unscrew this, take the little cover off and then you've got these terminals here. I'll come in a bit closer for that. So you've just got these terminals for your earth live and neutral from your plug and then the three leads you've got coming off your motor just go into here and if your motor goes the wrong way just reverse any two of these and it will change the direction of it so that bit is very simple just wiring the motor in and wiring the the mains into it So if this is all you want it to do, that's it. You can just switch the mains on. The lights will come on on the, the VFD and then you just press run. Press stop. Reverse it. Let's run it go the other way. And that's pretty much how they all come from the factory but that's not quite what we want so the first thing I want to do you the, these terminals here are where you're going to run your remote switches from and I'll see if I can get in a little bit closer to them so on the instruction street these terminals here run for these X terminals these terminals not them so what we want first of all we want to make these terminals active so if you look at the instruction sheet we'll look down at the, the instruction sheet just here we've got program 11 start and stop and the control source and you can have the panel out keyboard, an RS-485 or an external port. So it's the external port we want. So we just go to the programming, press the program button. Get out the program 11, press the function. It's on zero at the moment, which is as it comes in the factory and we want it on two so we just press that up to two press the function button again and that ends it and that will just take it on to the next programming if you want but we'll just check that now to see if it is all right press program again it takes you back to the ordinary state now if I turn if I start to run this now not going to work because it needs these so I'm just going to put a flying lead in I mean it's, it's going to be very hard to see on here but I'll try and get a close-up of it now, I don't know how the cameras I'm hand holding this and I don't know how the camera's going to see it but this is the common that you want the flying lead to go in then you've got X1 2 3 4 5 and 6 
and we'll come to them in a minute. So I'm just going to stick a flying lead into the common and then see if it's working off of this strip. Right, so I've got this little lead in, in the common terminal. You may have a look at the instructions. Forward and reverse are, are program numbers, five and six, they're not program numbers. They're the, uh, the number you would program into the program that does it. So five and six are on a forward and reverse. These, these are the terminals they're on. That's the program number. So you can change it if you want. But five and six are the forward and reverse on this. So touching this on five and six, five or six. So if I put it in five, it's off. It will take it out of there. Put it in six. That's off. Now I've still got the speed control. On the dial on the fascia of the VFD. You need a separate 10k potentiometer and they go in here. I have got the potentiometer somewhere over here. So there's my 10k potentiometer which I haven't wired up, I haven't wired anything up yet. So basically once you've wired the potentiometer in then we'll reprogram it so it's not operating off of this switch it's operating off well it will be operating off of there so that's all we've got to do basically is put a switch into here to if you put an on off switch in here and you switched it on and off and then add two leads which you switched off to the forward and off to the reverse that's how you could do it um, the jog function on this don't think it's wired into the instructions yet so jog forward and jog reverse you'd have to put in the code 17 and 18 on one of these multi-function inputs and none of these have got 17 or 18 on them so I'm gonna have to program that to put it in so if I use I'll use switch two and three for it. So the program number for switch two, which is terminal two on here, is program 51. So if I go back into programming again, go up to 51. Right, so that's the flower down thing the camera is going to pick that up. It's programming on pro, it's flashing on program 51. Then press the data function button, and that's on 14 at the moment, which is one of the set speed selections. If you have a look at the instructions, 14 is set speed. So you can program that to whatever you want if you want to have set, um, set speed controls, but I don't want that. So if I put that up to 17, that will be on a jog forward. I'll put it up to 17, end it, and it's going to go up to 52, which is multi-function input number 3. And jog reverse is 18, so I press the data function, move that one up to 18. There's the data and that will end that. So now that should on terminals two and three here they will be jog forward and and the speed control button won't make any difference to them because you program that separately for the jog speed you want. I've got no idea if that's the jog speed I'm going to want. And the number three will be jog in the reverse direction. So that's my buttons on here set up for what I want. I'm going to have to put the potentiometer in and then put the switches in for what I want to do with this.
Now I don't just want this on a switch to just go backwards and forwards and jog and well, so I want to put a on this low voltage side I want to put a no volt release switch on it so I can use the push buttons so I've bought some push buttons which I haven't got there, there they are so I've got these push buttons that I've bought they're non latching so they just push in and just make and break when you push them in and you can have them normally open or normally closed and I've got a couple of these which are either makes and breaks either side of this which I'm going to use for the forward and reverse which is and I've got a couple of 12 volt relays which I'm going to be using and I'll show you how I'm going to wire these up hopefully this is going to work I haven't tried it yet but I'll do a little diagram and show you how I'm planning on wiring these up okay I just want to try and be clear here what I'm actually trying to achieve and is all it is is the flying lead I had off of the X common basically if we think of the you see that yeah probably so we've got the X common on the VFD and there's the lead is all I want to do is put a switch in that Because all I want to do is put a switch in the X common which when closed will go to a forward and reverse switch which will take the X common to either forward or reverse but I want this switch to be controlled by an in, um, an, yeah, no volt release switch uh, and I want push button start and stop on the on the lathe I want it on an MVR because I've, I've got a uh, consumer unit in the shed but then that only comes up a consumer unit in the house if it trips all the way back through to the house and I have to go and reset in the house and the lathe's been running and I don't switch it off there's a good chance when I get down there I'll get distracted and the lathe could be going for god knows how long or maybe my grandson would walk in and decide to stick his fingers in it or something. But anyway, that, I mean that's that's the point of it. It's just just a apart from a safety feature, it's a lot more convenient. Like I said, I really like the buttons on the Newton Tesla one. So because this isn't this hasn't got any voltage, it's just a switch I want to do. I can't do it with one NVR. So. Let me let me put a circuit diagram up here and I'll try and explain that. Now let's bring so let's bring a a neutral in there and stick a live in. Let's let's move you in a bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. Right, that's better. I'll just try not to stick me nut in the way. Have we got? There goes my pen lid. Right, so we've got a, a, a neutral in there, and this will be the live. So we have a live in there. And we've got the switch. So this switch is going to be the switch that's operated so that's the relay so when the relay is energized it will close this switch and if you take the power off of it it will stop and then when this switch is closed it will put the power down here so we want to energize this switch So take that one off to the neutral so right 
got to pull that around there. That's the, that obviously won't work because you've got to energise the switch. So if I bring that lead in there with the normally open push button there, when you push that button, it'll engage it'll, be, it'll engage, it'll make this circuit which will come round to and energise the coil the switch will shut once the switch is shut it'll have power coming from this background to there so then it will stay shut which is fine but we now want to um, you want to be able to open it as well so if I put a normally closed push button in here when you push that and break this circuit it will break the current come the uh, power coming into the coil and the circuit will open so that's pretty much how normal NVR works I mean we're working with 12 volts here which I'm going to be getting off of the VFD but a 240 volt MVR that, that's how they all work but to do that we've got to have the voltage coming straight through it and I don't want 12 volts going this I want this to be a switch I don't I don't want any voltage coming through here if you was running this onto a little 12 volt motor that's all you'd need to do but that's not what I want I just want to open and close this X common switch so if I put another relay in here that'll be the coil for the relay and then the switch will be there these will be connected down here when this coil is energized which it will be when you when all this comes on that switch will close and I'll have the X common close going off to wherever I want it to go off to in this case it's going to be a switch for the forward and reverse for the for the motor so that is the circuit diagram for it which I think will work in fact I'm pretty sure it'll work so you've got a push button here which is normally open and this push button is normally closed the other thing about doing it this way is you can put all your safety cutouts in series with this switch if you if you've got say like the door on my change wheel cover is on a little micro switch when you open it it will cut the power to the lathe so if I wanted to if I just put that micro switch in there I'll call that door micro all the while that's closed everything will work as normal but if that door opens when the lathe is running that would also cut the power to everything and it would stop and you can put as many of them in if you've got one on your chuck guard or anything else you can put as many of them in in series in this in this circuit and that will operate all your safety features but I probably won't bother with that to be honest with you I just want the on off so that's how it looks in a circuit diagram so I'll rub that off and then I'll do a a wiring schedule just, just one other thing the jog feature I should just take that directly off of the the XCOM I shall put a normally open push button in there put another switch in with forward and reverse
so that when it's when the jog is put when I put the forward or reverse on the jog and press this button it will jog it and this doesn't need to be on the MVR because unless you're pushing that button the lathe ain't going to be going so that's not a problem so that's that's how I'm going to do the jog well, that's how I think I'm going to do the jog so I'll take this off I'll wipe this one off and I'll draw up an actual wiring schedule so that I can take this out to some chocolate boxes and and then eventually on to the VFD and the motor when it's on the lathe. Okay, so this is the actual wiring schedule for it that I've sort of worked out. Took me a while. I mean, I've just put these two 11s down here because I haven't got enough of these at the moment to enough chocolate boxes to make all this up I haven't got a strip of enough to do it and that is the 10k potentiometer for the speed which I'm going to have directly wired into the VFD while I test it on the bench right well I've got to go and do some soldering and try and connect all this up Right, well this is how it looks on the wall. And this is how it looks on the bench. But, oh, so I didn't have enough chocolate boxes so the pot is wired straight into the VFD. But, let's give it a go, power up the uh, VFD. That's the jog, that's the right. So, we haven't got the um, so this is the forward and reverse switch for run. So, if I switch it on, nothing will happen. Put it on forward, it will start. If I switch it off, it will stop. Switch it on again, it will start. Switch it off. Switch it over to reverse. Switch it on. Switch it off. And the thing is, you can actually change the direction of this while it's running. So if you switch this switch to the neutral position, and switch it to the reverse position it will reverse on my Tesla one you have to actually switch it off on the buttons and that's that and this is the switch for the jog which will do nothing I'll put it in forward or reverse I'm not sure which way around that's wide Little jog Switch it the other way. And it will jog. And the potentiometer is doing the speed. So this looks a complete mess at the moment, but I am quite pleased that it works. as I hoped it would. I've got to be honest with you, thinking about it fried my brain quite a bit. It's like most things. It's easy once you've sorted it out and you know how it's going, but it took me a while to figure it out to get there. 
anyway all this is going to be put onto a board and neatened up and tidied up and now I've got to make a fascia and some sort of panel to go on the front of the lathe to get everything neat and tidy and get the buttons where I can operate them so I'm going to have to get some aluminium or something and start doing a bit of bending or soldering or something to make that but that's going to be for another video but this all works so I'm thrilled to bits about that see you in the next one thanks for watching bye for now